Good afternoon adventurers. Today we're going to be installing the Yakima Overhaul HD truck rack on a three-quarter ton Chevy Silverado. You left me all alone, yeah, outside in the cold. Wanted to come over, wanted you to know how I'm getting over. Like I said before, your heart is fucking cold. I'm better off. Now before we get started, there's a few disclaimers to take into consideration. One of those is if you look on purchasing sites such as Amazon, uh, you're going to see a lot of people who give the product a low review, one or two stars. However, don't let that confuse you. That's not about the product, that's about false marketing and false packaging. Uh, the reason why this is happening is because if you look at the box, you see that it comes with these uprights and then it shows pictures of the crossbars. For some reason, purchasers are under the assumption because there's a picture on the box that the crossbars come with the product, and unfortunately they don't. Actually, Yakima makes it very clear that they don't come with it. When you purchase this, you're getting just the uprights. You do have to purchase the crossbars, other accessories, and stabilizing bars separately. The reason why they do this is because Yakima has made this truck bed rack very versatile and very customizable to suit the needs of any, any consumer who might be carrying lumber, or hauling a rooftop tent of some sort. I have purchased the adjustable height version. Uh, they do make two other versions. They make a mid-level one, which is stationary in height and does not change. The bars come in different lengths uh, so that you can customize it, as I mentioned. I believe they come in 55 inch, 60 inch, 68 inch, and 78 inch. So that's small, medium, large, and extra large. But if you have a Nissan or a Toyota, your bed rails are not designed the same as a standard bed rail that this is made for. So you will have to get an adapter kit. I'm gonna post the link for that from Amazon uh, in the description, it's about $110. So it's a little unfortunate, but one of the other primary reasons that I chose this amongst the other ones that I'll describe later is that one, it's easily removable, it's adjustable, and it locks to the truck. Now, as previously specified, the crossbars are sold separately. I got the extra large ones. Uh, these are the 78 inches, and so it's very important that you not assume that they're gonna come with your package. You do have to buy these separately. So, uh, another accessory that these come with are crossbars uh, that actually go in between uh, the two risers. Um, and these are extendable, and these can be done uh, for any length of box. So it's very important that you order the correct ones. Uh, they do come in a couple different sizes and, and these are perfect for you to mount your accessories on. I have a, do have a few accessories myself that I'll be mounting them on, uh, mounting on them, excuse me, uh, for uh, tracks boards and things of that sort. Roto packs uh, are great to mount on these things and they do add a little bit of stability. It came with what seemed like really high quality tools because obviously it is adjustable and so you're going to need to be able to keep these in your truck so that you can make adjustments to it as you need to parts package. These are the locking platforms that actually mount to your truck and they are lockable. That's one of the reasons why I purchased this. You have one of the riser portions here which is adjustable. You can see that there's adjustment screws to raise it higher or lower and if I'm not mistaken there's also laser engraved or etched markings so that you can make sure that all four sides are exactly the same. Clamps to hold it onto the truck. The locking mechanisms that allow us to lock the rack to the truck. All right, now that we've got our components laid out, we're ready for assembly. Uh, as you can see, we've got the uprights, we have the base to the uprights, and then we have the actual clamping mechanism there. Now, something interesting about the uprights, only two of these have the locking uh, dowel on them, the other two don't. Yakima recommends that you put the locking dowel on the left front of the driver's side and the right rear of the passenger side. So that's how I have it laid out. These are the tools that we're gonna need obviously the ones provided by Yakima, as well as a tape measure and some sort of marking device. Now to look at some of the stats, and one of the reasons why I chose this particular uh, bed rack was the on-road weight capacity is 500 pounds, the off-road weight capacity is 300 pounds, and then the static weight load is 800 pounds. Static is just simply when it's parked. These bolts and these um, large square washers are for the clamps and then these bolts washers and these plates here are actually for putting those uh, the crossbars uh, on the 
upright supports. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the base mounts on and I'm gonna leave them loose on the bed so that I can slide them around and then I'll actually do the measuring and placement before I tighten them down. Now the other reason why I chose this bed rack assembly is the base mount here, when you unscrew these dowels here, it's a clamping system that actually clamps the upright. So that means you can rapidly take it on and off and you can do it with one person. It doesn't require a whole lot of effort so that you can use your truck for other utility. That was one of the other main reasons why I chose this particular setup. Now it's important to note that I didn't fully tighten these down so that I can still slide these back and forth uh, once I go to start taking measurements. Ah, I lost my tool. Don't lose your tool. And remember, I'm just tightening these down enough to hold them in place. We got to do some measuring uh, to get everything nice and centered the way we want it. Now that we have the bases loosely mounted, uh, it's time to take measurements. Now the trick with measuring is to be consistent. Make sure that you're measuring uh, from the same point on the same side of the truck. Unfortunately, vehicles are not square, they're round, so that does make it a little tough. Uh, so you might have to make double measurements and go back and do it multiple times before you get everything right. This is actually the most critical part of mounting it, is to make sure that everything is measured correctly. Now for me, it's important that the base mounts are as far forward and as far back as they possibly can go. I have a very large rooftop tent, so I want the most stability possible. Plus, I plan on carrying lumber. So if they're too close together, uh, that creates a stability uh, for anything that's hanging over the cap. Now the other thing you want to be mindful of is as you're tightening these down when you get them in place is to make sure that the base mounts are sucked into the rail of the truck or the bed of the truck as tight as possible. through and make sure that everything is tight to German torque spec. Good enough. Good and tight. Now that we got the base mounts all on and everything's tightened down, we can go ahead and start mounting our uprights. And it's just as simple as loosening these screws here and the clamp will come out. You insert them in, tighten them up, and they clamp right in. So we'll get to that right now. You are going to need your Yakima provided tools. And there we have it. It's that simple. Uh, this literally would have taken me 30 maybe 40 minutes had I not waited for my uh, neighbors to stop mowing their lawns so that I could actually shoot the video. Uh, so now the next thing is just going to be the crossbars uh, which is actually what's going to really add a lot of that stability to this and that weight bearing load. So we're going to get to that next. These are rather simple to install. All you have to do is undo this nut here, pull this cap off, slide two of these plates into that T-channel there, put that cap back on and you're ready to mount it on here. And all you have to do is get the holes lined up with these holes. I don't know if you can see it here, but they have etching so that you can make sure that you get them centered and they're lined up correctly on both sides. So we're gonna get to that now. We're gonna take two of these plates per rail and we're just gonna slide them into the T-channel, just like so. And then we're gonna put the cap back on. Now those little plates that we put on there, uh, those are gonna line up with the holes on the uprights and that's what the screws are gonna screw into to lock these cross rails uh, into the uprights. And so we'll be using these here. Now when we do these, we wanna make sure that we put the lock washer on first and then the flat washer. That lock washer, that compression washer, that's gonna keep it from backing out uh, as it's vibrating and things of that sort. So we'll have to do this for both of them. So let's get to it. I gotta be honest with you, that was probably the hardest part about the whole thing, is trying to get everything lined up where you can't see it. 
this is extremely stable now uh, that these are on here. When it comes time to change the height of these, if you need to for any reason, there's bolts on the outside, bolts on the inside, which will allow you to lift the, uh, the uprise up. However, in order to do so, you would also have to loosen the screws for the crossbar because as these come up, they come in. And so the crossbar is going to need to slide a little bit. So in order to raise these up, got to loosen the outside screws, inside screws, and the screws for the crossbar in order to raise them up. All right, now that that's done, which that was the most tedious part, but you can see how stable they really are. Now I do have one more thing to install before we're finished. I actually got the uh, side rail um, accessory racks to put on here. So we'll get to that now. Well, the side rail will be used to uh, install various accessory pieces, things for recovery boards, rotopax mounts, things of that sort. Uh, Yakima has mounts for all of these different things. I've already installed the driver's side to it, but we'll go ahead and install the passenger side. And the simple thing that we have to do is we do have to loosen these screws here, which allow us to extend this out so that we can go ahead and mount it. Now, one of the neat things is that they do have this sliding piece here so that you can slide it to mount whatever accessory you need uh, so that you can center it the way you want it to be centered. Uh, the only thing that we have to do is put four screws in. It's a very simple thing to do. Use the provided Allen wrench and we'll get it done. Now, one of the things that might be confusing about this is the side rails do come with these uh, uh, plastic plates, uh, leading you to believe that you need to use them. Uh, you do not need these on the overhaul HD. You will need to use these on the overland mount, however. So this particular side rail can be used on a couple different Yakima mounts. These are for the overland mount, not required for the overhaul mount. And as always, we'll always put our compression washer on first and then our flat washer. Always put the lock washer on first, then the flat washer. Now, one of the other things that I'm gonna make sure that I do is these screws for the sliding spacer. I'm gonna make sure that those are mounted to the inside so that they're not exposed to the rain and get corroded. They're on the inside, less rain exposure, less corrosion, less problems. Now, one of the last things we have to do is we do have to tighten the screws uh, for the slides. Uh, this one in particular, you'll wanna tighten after you get your accessory on and spaced correctly, but the set screw uh, on this end, you're gonna wanna make sure that you tighten those so that they don't accidentally fall out. I did get recovery board mounts. I intend on mounting them to the inside. I do believe these are actually designed for max tracks. Uh, however, given that the fact that they're straps, you can mount any recovery board you want to them. I got two sets of load stops. The load stops actually mount on top of the rails and the idea behind these is for when you're carrying lumber, uh, you have a way of stopping the side to side motion and also a way of strapping them down. I also got a roller bar so that I can load lumber on here uh, by myself without any help and or a ladder without things slamming down. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, I believe the rolling bar was like 90 bucks, a little overpriced. I did get the eye bolts, uh, which I'd intended on mounting to the underside of the rails, uh, but I can't find them. So I ordered this stuff when I was deployed overseas and they're somewhere in my garage. I know they're here, they're somewhere. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you hang on to the Yakima provided tools. Uh, I'm gonna keep them in my little toolkit here in my pickup. You never know when you're gonna to need to make an adjustment or tighten things down. Furthermore, after you install your rack, after you've driven maybe 100 miles or put your rooftop tent on there, after a few miles, I recommend that you get up there and re-tighten all your screws. They may loosen up to the vibration as well as the expansion and contraction from the sun, cold weather, and or just simple break-in. So always make sure you get up and re-tighten those after you've installed it. The first pro is that it's actually very easy to install. It does not take uh, a genius to do it and it comes with all the tools necessary to do so minus a flashlight and a tape measure. It's extendable, at least mine is, so I can raise the height higher and lower uh, which makes it very versatile for carrying lumber and or a rooftop tent or anything else that you plan to use it for. It's rapidly removed. All you have to do to remove it is loosen four screws on each base mount and the whole thing will come off. This can be done with one person, however it is a lot easier with two. The other thing that's a true benefit is that it is lockable to the truck. Two of the base mounts have a locking mechanism. I honestly would prefer that all four base mounts have the locking mechanism. You can also customize and bedazzle the crap out of this thing. There are all kinds of accessories for all of your overlanding and or industrial needs. You can see here I have my recovery board mounts. They also come with load mounts, 
or load stop mounts, eye bolts, roller mounts for ladders and lumber. There's a T-channel on top of the top rails with a rubber uh, grommet in it that you would have to remove to mount various other things in there and then cut it to your desired length. One of the other pros and one of the main reasons why I chose this is that it can haul a lot of weight. Its static weight while it's sitting here is 800 pounds. Its regular road weight while you're driving down a regular highway is 500 pounds and its off-road weight is 300 pounds. So it would be very difficult to exceed the weight of this depending on what you're trying to do. If you're overlanding with a rooftop tent, you're not going to exceed 300 pounds rolling down uh, a dirt track road. And while you are parked, an 800 pound limit will allow you, your wife or partner, uh, and children and or dog to sleep comfortably. The only instability is in the truck itself. It is extremely stable, it's very well made, it's very well engineered, and I would have to say that Yakima literally thought of everything. One of the other pros that they come with is that each upright has a bottle opener. We can all use a few more bottle openers for our beers. Uh, one of the other cons, despite its versatility and its customize, uh, customization ability, is that it is very costly. I myself, between the uprights, the cross rails, the side rails, excuse me, and then the cross rails, as well as some accessory mounts, I am well over $1,500 into this. You can get a bed rack mount that uh, does many of the same things for far cheaper. However, the reason why I purchased this is because of its customizability and versatility and allows me to do many other things. And it's a rapid ability to remove it when I need to. So please stay tuned and always please subscribe.